This presentation covers the basic concepts that are the underlying foundation for our discussion on precision agriculture. In order to apply precision ag, we need to understand what plants need to grow and how farmers quantify agricultural production, such as determining what makes up a good yield for a crop they're studying. Once a farmer knows what the plants need, they can then determine what kind of inputs will affect the yield. For example, if a crop of corn is estimated to have a 100 bushel yield, the farmer must determine if nutrients are necessary or if funds spent on those nutrients could be better used elsewhere. Finally, we'll talk about how we can affect and enhance the soil. Plants need sun for photosynthesis for them to grow. Obviously, it's difficult for farmers to control the amount of sun for most crops. Plants need water, and most farmers do have some control over water through irrigation. Soil contributes to plant growth in many ways, and finally, plants need protection from pests, weeds, and disease. Crop yield is often measured by volume or weight. A bushel of corn weighs about 156 pounds, and yields can be up to 150 bushels per acre. According to Dan Swafford, yields have increased since the 60s when 100 bushels per acre was a good yield for corn and 25 bushels for soybeans. Much has changed over the years. To change those yields, farmers cannot lengthen a day, but they can manage other inputs, such as the amount and location of nutrients applied to the soil. Plant food has two major components, macro and micro elements, which refers to the relative amount of the nutrients that are needed by the plant. Both are very important for plant growth. Let's look at the major elements first. The three major nutrients are N for nitrogen, P for phosphorus, and K for potassium. These are the nutrients that plants need most and are important to plant growth. Different ratios of N to P to K are used for different types of plant growth, whether it's for leafy growth or blooming, for example. Fertilizer manufacturers always place the nutrients on the bag in the same order from left to right, N, P, K. In our example, 1648, 16 indicates that 16% 16 of the nutrients in the bag is nitrogen, with 4% phosphorus and 8% potassium. So for a 100 pound bag of fertilizer, there will be four pounds, or 4% of 100, of phosphorus. Likewise, in a 50 pound bag, there will be eight pounds of nitrogen, 16% of 50. So 28% of this bag is macronutrients. The other 72% of the weight of this bag is mainly filler and possibly some other minor or micronutrients. Be sure to check the label on the back for more information. Now let's look at some of the minor or micro elements. These are required in smaller amounts, but are very important to healthy plant growth. Here we see listed calcium, sulfur, iron, boron, copper, and zinc. If your plants don't get the right amount of calcium, new plant tissues, such as the tips of the roots, shoot tips, and young leaves can't form properly. And notice this fertilizer contains iron. Without iron, plants would not be able to produce chlorophyll, which gives plants healthy green color. So, plants require both macro, or major, and micro, or minor, nutrients, just in different quantities. Just another quick example. With an NPK of 20, 0, 6, this bag is 20% nitrogen, 10 pounds of nitrogen in the 50-pound bag, 0% phosphorus, and 6% potassium. And you might be able to see in the image that there is 3% iron. The other 71% of this bag is filler and possibly micronutrients if we could read the tiny print on the label on the bag. To determine the fertilizer you need for your soil, have the soil tested. A soil test will tell you if your soil is deficient in nutrients and which ones. This information can help you choose the appropriate fertilizer and application rate for your soil and your particular crop. In Virginia, your local extension office has a kit that you can use to do a soil test. They'll send your test kit to the state lab and you'll get results in the mail. So how do the major nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium affect plants? Nitrogen encourages vegetative growth, 
producing a healthy green plant. It also helps regulate the plant's use of the macro, or major elements. Nitrogen deficiency results in stunted plants that may also be yellow in color. Root growth slows and plant maturity delays. Phosphorus encourages flowers and the resulting seed formation. It also helps root growth and cell division in the plant. Fertilizers high in phosphorus could be used on crops such as soybeans, corn, and other vegetables that have flowers and seeds that we want a lot of. Phosphorus also hastens maturity. In Virginia, corn takes about 100 days to mature, and if planted in May, we need not worry about harvesting in time because we have a long growing season. But north of Virginia, the growing season may be shorter, and increasing phosphorus could be used to hasten corn's maturity. Sometimes phosphorus is not needed at all. For example, you may see a bag of fertilizer with NPK of 30-0-0, or 0% phosphorus. This fertilizer would be good for lawns. Grass needs lots of nitrogen for green leafy growth, but doesn't have flowers or seeds to support. Not enough phosphorus can result in fewer flowers and seeds, and an increase in plant diseases. A symptom of phosphorus deficiency is purple color on the underside of leaves. Potassium is essential for plant resistance to disease and supports photosynthesis and chlorophyll development. It also encourages root growth and water uptake, resulting in drought resistance. Tubers are part of the root system, and since potassium encourages root growth, it's also important for tuber development in crops such as peanuts, carrots, and potatoes. In summary, Plants need both macro and micronutrients in differing quantities and ratios depending on the plant. These nutrients are acquired from the soil, and soils contain variable amounts of these nutrients. A soil test will help determine both the type and amount of nutrients needed. Soils, even in the same field, will have differing amounts of these elements. Soil samples should be taken from multiple areas of the field and appropriate nutrients applied to each area. Soil acidity is measured by examining the pH of the soil using a soil test. Most plants require a pH of about 7, which is neutral. Acid soil has a lower pH, while alkaline soil is higher in pH. The element sulfur can be used to lower pH, while lime can be used to raise the pH. Broadly, in the eastern part of the U.S., pH will be acid, or lower than 7 while in the western U.S., pH will be alkaline, or higher than 7. The goal is to have a soil with a pH of around 7. A small shift in pH can make a big difference to plant health. Plants differ in their pH requirements, and if the soil is too imbalanced for a particular plant, the plant will not thrive. Here are some typical pH ranges for garden crops. Notice how low a pH is required by blueberries. And notice another pattern. Very few of these species require a pH higher than neutral or 7. The rule of thumb is to aim for 7, except for blueberries, which have a significantly lower pH need. A farmer's goal is to increase and maximize crop yields, and they will use various inputs, such as fertilizer, to help increase yields. A soil test is the farmer's opportunity to place the correct type and amount of input on their fields. And if they're using drones with precision agriculture techniques, they can target specific locations in a field for placing precise amounts of those inputs. It's important to place the correct amount and type of input precisely on a field to avoid unintended environmental impacts, such as fertilizer runoff into a nearby stream. Farming operations are increasingly data-driven through the use of drones and other precision agricultural equipment to help save costs by minimizing inputs while also maximizing yields.